Hello, today we will be covering scene transitions in Godot 4. We will go over step by step how to transition scenes when the game has started and when the game has ended as well as implementing this nice fade animation. So let's get started and cover everything there is to know about scene transitioning in Godot 4. This is part 5 of the tutorial series where we will be covering how to create this exact hack and slash game step by step in Godot 4. If you have any questions regarding errors, understanding or anything at all then please let me know in the comments and I will be sure to get back to you. Remember that all the tutorials are completely free but if you want to help support me a little bit more then a link to my Patreon page will be in the description below your support truly means the world thanks and remember to subscribe and drop a like to help youtube push this tutorial and this entire series to more aspiring game developers and now let's begin so to get started with scene changing let's cover what we're going to want to change so we're going to want to transition from this lobby scene here into our stage scene but we want our lobby scene to change scenes whenever our player decides to jump off this cliff and fall down here so we're going to need some sort of area 2d to send a signal to our script and tell us okay we need to change scenes and then we'll change into the stage scene here. And whenever that plays, we're going to end up spawning up here. And it's going to look like we're falling off of the area. So to do that, we're going to go to our lobby scene. And we're going to end up adding in an area 2D. Now, this area 2D is going to be called our start game detection zone, right? Because that's what it is. So it's going to be our start game detection. And then this is going to consist of just a basic, whoops, not a color rect, but a uh collision shape so it's going to be a collision shape and then this collision shape is going to be a square and we can move this collision shape over here right under our camera so this is the scene one camera this is the player camera we don't care about the player camera because that one is not even enabled in our lobby scene so we want to make sure that whoops we want to make sure that this collision shape is under our camera like this we can add it here and then we can go to our start detection and we can send in a signal from our node up here and then we can go okay well body entered and send send that to our lobby level now to check if the player enters this detection i want to go to our player and i want to add in a class name this class name is just going to make deciding if the body is a player easier right so and i'll explain how that's going to work so if we say class name player this is within our player script that's going to set this player or this node, this scene to the class name player. So if we go to our lobby scene, if we go back into the script, we can say right here, okay, well, okay, we're gonna get a signal if a body enters the area 2D. But what if we want to say, we only want to signal, or we only want to run what's in this function if the body that enters is the player body. So to do that, we can say if body is player, and then do that. And then that's gonna return true, right? So that's gonna return, like if we go print uh, body, right? So if we print body and we go to our lobby scene, click F6, you're gonna see how that's gonna work. It's going to jump down and it's gonna print the player's character body 2D. It's gonna print the exact scene. So, okay, it, it is equal to player. But to change scenes, it is actually pretty easy. We can just say get tree dot change scene to file. And this file is going to be whatever file we end up loading in. So we can come over here and we can drag and drop a file from our file system. For example, we'll do our stage scene because that's the one we want to transition into, just like that. And then basically, if we jump in that area, we're going to end up transitioning. So if we click F6, go to our lobby level, we jump down, you're gonna see a transition scenes, but it's not gonna be smooth. It's gonna be rough. It's gonna be kind of not exactly the way you want it to make it look good within a actual game. So we're gonna go through some stuff to kind of fix this up. now. A variable that we're going to need within our global variable just to run our game a little bit better is going to be a var start game just so every other thing within our game every other scene when our in our game knows if the game has started or not so this is doesn't really have anything to do with our uh scene changing but i want to set this for future tutorials so we can say okay get started our game started and then we can come over here and then basically we can say game started is, is equal to true within the function here right right before we swap scenes we want to set game started to true just so we know that it is set to true and then that's all that we're going to be doing here in the lobby scene but we need to go have a way back to the lobby scene right because if we go and we click play and we come and we go over here and we jump down we spawn in it works we come let's fight some enemies real quick you're going to see what happens when we die let's purposely die real quick we're going to end up dying right and then nothing's gonna happen we're not gonna go back to the lobby scene because but we do need to go back to the lobby scene so our game is in a loop so we can actually play the game over and over so to do this we can go to our stage scene here 
and we can go into our process function and within our process function we can just say okay well if the global dot player alive is equal or, or so is equal to false so if global dot player alive is equal to false that means the player is dead then we want to say okay well the player has died we want to now end the game so to do that we can say well global dot our game started variable is going to now equal false because our game is no longer in progress and then we want to just basically do that run that same exact function which is going to switch our scene back right so scene to file and then we can drag in our lobby scene here just like this and then if we go and we click play basically when the global dot player live the moment the player dies we are going to transition back to our other scene but i do want to cover something real quick with this so if we go and we play, you're going to see that there is going to be an error. So we can just click play on the stage scene. We spawn in and we start playing, right? Once our player dies, there is going to be a little bug here. And you're going to see why. We don't end up playing our death animation. We just instantly go back. But the good news is you can kind of see that we have a loop. We can play this game over and over and over. Right? So the moment we die, we're going to go back and we can keep playing it over and over. But the loop, right? We can't see the player's death animation. So to do that... I noticed just a tiny bug is that this global.player live variable is set in the wrong spot within our player script. So if we go to our player script, we come down here to our take damage, we set it in the take damage. So if we copy this and we remove it, you're going to see that instead of setting it in the take damage before we handle our death animation, so the death animation isn't even called basically because we switched the scene before the death animation is even called. So if we come down here to the bottom, and set that right before Q free. So the player dies basically right before it is freed, right as all the animations are finishing. You're gonna see what happens now. If we go to our stage scene, we're gonna end up playing our animation that we made, our death animation that we created in the last episode, but right before we respawn. So, oh, we died, right? And then where are we gonna go? Well, we're gonna end up spawning back up here and then we can play this as a forever loop. But now there is one more thing that I do want to go over, and that is going to be the scene changing transition animations and stuff like that. So let's make sure it works one more time, and then let's go over the animations now. So to do the animations, we're going to end up creating a brand new scene. Now this new scene is going to be a, just a no 2D, and it's going to just consist of a color rect. So we can name this a scene transition animation, right? Because that's all it's going to be. And then we can say, okay, color rect. And then we're also going to want a uh, animation player. And first of all, this color rect here, we can just make it a very big color rect like this. And then we can set the color of it to black. So we can fade black and then unfade from black. So we can say, okay, this is what we want. And then we can go to our animation player. We can say some new animation by clicking on this window down here and click on this animation button and click new. We can name our new animation. We'll name the very first one fade in. So to fade in, we'll make it last uh, half a second over here by putting 0.5. And then basically how we're going to go about this is we're going to click on our color rect. We're going to come up here to the color. And if we're fading in, what do we want to come first? Well, we want transparent to come first. So we can click on the color. We can drag this A value all the way over to the left. And then we can click on the keyframe and create. Then we can drag the line all the way to the right side set the A value back to 255 and we can keyframe that. And you're gonna see if we play this animation, it's going to do a nice little fade, right? And then we can go up here, create a new animation. This is going to be our fade out animation. Now fade out is going to basically want, we want it to start completely solid. And then we want to drag it to the 0.5, make sure we set our timer here to our, our animation duration 2.5 then we can say okay we want it to start solid then we want it to move towards transparent and we can click good to go right so that is how we want that to work just like that and that's going to look good and then i want to go to our scene and we want to implement this so first we can save this into our scenes folder we'll first implement it into our lobby scene and we can instance this by clicking on this little chain and we can say okay well scene transition animation we can go into our lobby scene script we can come up here, we can create a on ready variable. And this on ready variable is going to be our scene. Um, we can just name it transition 
animation just like that and that's going to be equal to our scene transition I forgot to put var that's going to be equal to our scene transition animation slash animation player okay so now that we have our animation player we can come down and we want to play it down in our function down here so where are we going to want to play our animation well when the game is started right before we call the scene that's when we want to play it so we can say okay let's get our variable that we created and we can say play and then we can play our animation which is going to be our fade in animation but there's going to be an issue with this because if we instantly play it we're never going to see the animation because there is no wait time so it looks like nothing happens even though the animation is playing because we're going to instantly change scenes the moment it starts playing so we never get to see it so we can just set a little in in code timer here by saying await get tree dot create timer and then maybe 0.5 seconds because that's how long the animation is and then dot timeout and then we will change scenes after waiting half a second you're going to see what happens then we play the animation then we switch scenes but when we come to this one it looks very straightforward because we don't end up fading out of the complete solid color so to do that we have to go into our stage level and now in our stage level we're going to go into the ready function and we can say okay well let's create this variable that we created over here the exact same variable right let's instance that into our scene let's create that variable then let's come down here into our ready function and we can say okay well what do we want to happen well we want our scene transition animation dot play and we want to play the fade out now if we were to go and click play you're going to see something that could go wrong with this if we jump down here you're going to see it's going to fade out and it's going to do a little glitch we can just hard code set it over here at our uh, ready function in our stage level just to double check and make sure we can say okay scene transition dot we're going to have to get the parent right and then we're going to have to also get the node because of where it's located and we're going to have to say okay well we want to get the color rect right so if we get parent and then get node color rect if that's what it's called yeah so okay so we're gonna get our animation player and then we're gonna have to get parent dot get node color rect dot color dot the color value a which is going to be the transparency of it is going to be equal to 255 which is the max right so that's basically gonna hard code this to set it to complete darkness right that's what that's gonna do because we're going to get the scene transition animation player. Then we're going to get the parent. We're going to end up getting this node 2D. Then we're going to get the node color rect, which is right here. And then we're going to end up hard coding its color a to 255 on the very start. So if we were to go to our lobby scene, we click play, we come and we jump down here. You're going to see that it works nice and smooth now, all right? If we jump down, it's going to fade in nice and smooth because we hard code set it the moment the scene opens up and loads. Now, I want to do exactly what we just did here by copying these two and I want to move them over to our lobby scene and we can throw these in the ready function as well. So whenever we come to the lobby scene, we're going to play the exact same thing. Now, if we open up the lobby scene, you're going to see we have a little fade animation. We jump down here. We have a fade. It fades out. And if we were to die by the bats, well, it we're also going to fade out. But you're going to see that the animation is going to look a little weird when we die because we don't play it as our players disappearing from the map, right? So we may have just found a little bug with our player who slid there. We have to make sure we set the player's velocity to dot x to equal to zero, the player's velocity dot x and dot y to equal to zero whenever it is and it's dying or when it is currently dying. So we have to, that, that's something that we could go and change. But what I wanna go over here is I want to go over our stage level and how we're gonna play this animation. Okay, so we're gonna end up playing this animation right before our scene changes. So right here, right as our scene is changing, we want to play our fade animation to do that it's going to be pretty simple just like we've done before just scene transition animation dot play and this is going to be for our fade in animation because we are switching the scene to move on and if we do that well you're going to see that over here in our player scene or in our lobby scene if we click play and we load in we have a little fade we jump down we have a little fade we fade in and we can attack these guys they can attack us whenever we die you can see our health down here in the bottom. We're gonna end up playing our fade, our, our dying animation. Then we're gonna end up playing our fade animation. And then we're going to load into our scene. 
Now, there are things that we can change. Maybe you want the animation to be a little bit longer here, and I want to cover that because if we go over here to our stage scene and we go to our player, it just depends where we change our global variable. So if we look at our, where here it is, it's going to be our handle that animation. You can see that once we zoom in the camera, maybe we want to start playing the animation there, right? Or maybe we want to wait a second after zooming in before we play the animation. So then we'd have to have another await timer here. And maybe we can say, okay, well, we want to wait one and a half seconds. And then we can say, okay, well, we want two more seconds here, right? We want two more seconds before we actually want to end the scene. And to do that, well, we can say something like, okay, well, maybe we want, or I guess we could have 0.5, right? So maybe we could do, okay, 0.5 left, 0.5 at the bottom. And then up here we could do, three seconds and then if we do this we're going to have to ha add an await time over there so we can say okay well once we turn the player alive to equal false that means we're going to end up running this so then if we instantly play this well we're going to play too soon and the animation is not going to have the time to finish so we can say okay well game started false transition we want to start playing the fade in animation then we can give it half a second to finish the fade in animation before it swaps and then it's going to swap nice and smooth like it should so if we click play we load in Jump down, we load in, and we can't attack these guys. They can attack us, and once we die, you're going to see that we die, and we're going to end up playing the fade animation while the player is still there, and we load in, and it looks 10 times better, right? So that looks way better, and that is kind of how you go through scene changes. That's how you kind of cover animation transitions with scene changes, and I hope this video was able to help you in some sort of way. If it was, then please subscribe and drop a like to help other aspiring game developers learn to create their own good old games as well. And if you're having any issues at all, then please let me know in the comments down below so I can try and help you out. But thank you so, so, so much. Good luck in your game dev journey. And until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.